Hi, my name's John Cordy, and in that intro you saw Ben Kerrigan. Now this guy's local to me, I think he lives in Exeter, you can confirm that with me, Ben. He um, has an Instagram which is kind of useful, it gives like these really cool little kind of like minute long tips on technique and stuff. Um, he's interested in some of the same sort of stuff as I think we might be, um, in terms of legato and that sort of thing. So that's why I saw um, a video of his there's like this longer YouTube video of his about some legato stuff. I'll share that in the description. But in it, there was this little exercise, and he was talking about doing like a trill type thing with your. Well, anyway, let, let me explain it like this. So if you imagine you've got three notes per string, um, you've got one, two, three notes per string, right? And we can sort of think about that uh, in terms of permutations and stuff. And so when you say like one, two, three, you might mean. sort of thing, yeah, so you go, that permutation wise that would just be 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 on each string, right, so, or you could go like 1, 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, I mixed that up with what I was saying, but 1, 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, or you could go like 1, 2, 3, really useful stuff if you're interested in this legato thing. Now the thing that he said about doing was uh, initially showed it descending so what we want to do is go one, two, one, two, three, two, three, two, like that. One, two, one, two, three, two, three, two. And so you could think about this as like a, a mixture of trills or however you want to think about it. I'm kind of just thinking of, about it as that just being the, the permutation that I'm going for on each string. So the concept that I was taking from this, shut up Fenton, was that you would take this and you move this around sort of three note per string patterns as part of your like maybe daily legato exercise. Um, so like... So you could just do it around the major scale. Um, you know, I, I'm not really very good at it yet. Uh, it's something I think is definitely worth practicing, but you know, take it around the major scale, you could maybe say, okay, today I'm going to try some melodic minor stuff. But it's one of these really useful little permutation things. What is going on out there? What is going on? What is going on? What is going on? Total chaos. Anyway, other ideas, so Ben's kind of concept was taking it close in this kind of proximity. My idea was I want to use it for more of these uh, three note per string shapes or even like uh, big pentatonic stretches. Something cool like that. So what I'm going to do is put together just a little tab spread spreadsheet. What am I talking about? A tab uh, of a few exercises in this sense. So, um, so the major scale stuff. Melodic minor stuff. Ah. And then also these wider
be a really good kind of set of little exercises that help bring more of that kind of control to your legato. Um, some really good tips in Ben's stuff about how to execute legato. I won't go into too much detail here, but you want to keep a relatively relaxed left hand. Um, and maybe instead of concentrating too much on like the pull off being like a big away from the fretboard thing, just down away from the string. Like a slightly smaller movement which is just across the string, brushing rather than uh, the idea of just pulling up. Um, there's a debate about whether you want to be anchoring this index finger or not. Tom Quayle talks about lazy first finger syndrome. Um, so consider whether you want to do a thing where you're kind of making an, a conscious effort to lift up your uh, fingers each time you execute. So you're trying to go for like more of a hammer on type type approach. That's definitely worth practicing and maybe practice playing it slightly harder. And without the right hand to really get the sense that actually executing each thing as a hammer on um, and then the other real concept that is worth practicing is to trying to do it with your left hand only and not your right hand so this is really tricky but like for the pentatonic type wide shape sound like an idiot when you do this so maybe use headphones and you, you can use your right hand a little bit to mute it um, if you want to sound less like that but anyway hopefully that's vaguely interesting as I say I'll put up that backing track that we were jamming over but this idea of trilling so you're going from one to speed on that and not hitting all of those open strings. Um, but something that I'm going to be working on in the hope that it improves my legato. So something you could do daily Whatever you're practicing, try and take that kind of trilling idea through that shape. So, um, you know, it might be a lot of minor, it might be whole tone. Of course, you could be practicing that skill all the time, aren't you? Catch you in another video soon. Cheers! Oh, yeah, go give Ben like a follow and check out his Instagram in particular because he does these like daily tips which I think are pretty useful. Um, and could really help give you some like little insights into bits and pieces. I think he does teach as well, so you could hit him up if you wanted to. Cheers, Ben. He's from Exeter. He's a local boy. That's why I wanted to get him involved in this because I saw that trill video. Cheers.